This is WABD, Channel 5, New York. Welcome back to Easter 58. Once again, a look at Fifth Avenue, Fifth Avenue in the rain. We're enjoying a brunch here at the Gotham Hotel at 55th and Fifth Avenue. As you can see, there are not very many paraders outside, but most of the joy of Easter is with us today. And let's join Phyllis Patel and her guest, Sammy Kay. Phyllis? Hi, Sammy. How are you this morning? I'm just fine. Happy Easter to you. Happy Easter to you. Did you know, Sammy, that this is the 25th anniversary of the song Easter Parade? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Well, it is, and uh, we tried to get Irving to come on the show, but, you know, he's a very modest man, and he said he'd rather not. But well, I I'd understand. be very happy to talk about it, wonderful songs. Yeah. Well, aren't Excuse you one me, of Phyllis. the first ones who ever um, recorded it? I don't think I was the first. I think probably... Uh, I never doesn't fail me. I think uh, Crosby probably recorded it first. How does someone get first crack at a great song? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't know it's a great song until uh, after it's recorded, because actually White Christmas was uh, was in a far picture and uh, talking about uh, Berlin. Yeah. And uh, that song was recorded, and the song became a big hit. I mean, one of the greatest hits of all time. It's still the picture meant nothing. Uh huh. So we don't know so a song is a, uh, a great song until it's. Uh, Presented. You weren't offered Easter Parade and turned it down first for you. No, no, I wasn't recording 25 years ago. Oh, that's kind of <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been in the band? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, uh, since, uh, well, it's over 20 years now. Uh, almost 25, I guess. I was school uh, in 33, so it would make it uh, 25 now. Uh -huh. But I didn't get to New York to record till about 1939. What do you think about rock and roll? I know you've been asked this question a million times. Swing and sway is so different from rock and roll. I just wondered, how long is this thing going to last? Well, I think it's going to last for a while. I, I I see nothing too wrong with it. I think some of the rock and roll numbers are pretty bad, but uh, it seems that uh, right now they seem to be going over to perhaps a little better songs and still doing them in the rock and roll style. For instance, uh, I'm sorry now, I just mentioned that. And a song called Billy, that's the other number. These are oh, old, I heard that <laughs> old standards. They're real, real fine songs, and they uh, use them as uh, rock and roll numbers, but at least they're better songs. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems like I've been writing, and, and on good authority, I've been interviewing musical experts for about three years now. And each year they've said that rock and roll is practically out. And, I, you know, I think there are some older folks like myself who would like to see it go. Uh, Phyllis, actually, I don't want to see it go. I'm a dance band leader, and I think that the advent of rock and roll was an indication by the youngsters that they wanted to go back to dancing. There was a era there where singers uh, recorded ad lib. There was no beat. And gradually, uh, someplace along the line, somebody made the, what we call rock and roll uh, records, or started with one, and they accepted it, uh, indicating that they wanted to dance. And of course, that to me was, uh, was delightful and that the uh, Roosevelt, why we uh, we play rock and roll numbers and play them just as loud as anybody. I'm sure that Lombardo turns over in his restaurant when, he, uh, when we play them. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Sammy, and now I'll turn it back to Art Van Horn. Thank you, Phyllis. Sammy Kay has been playing Easter Parade for 25 years. The Fifth Avenue Association is more than 50 years old. Sammy's got a long ways to go. You should know that 60 years ago, Charles Willoughby, founder of the store that bears his name, set forth these policies still in effect today. Let's hear from Fred Scott. This we believe. We believe that a store exists for the customer and not the customer for the store. We believe that every customer is fully entitled to the consideration of courtesy, respect, and service. We believe that to deal fairly with our customers is an obligation which we should never forget. We believe that every statement we make in our advertising should be a true representation of the facts. At Willoughby's, we believe that misrepresentation is harmful, not only to our customers, but equally harmful to us. We believe that a bargain is not a bargain unless quality and service. 
must be run a sale, it must offer prices not ordinarily available. We believe that when we advertise an item or items, we should have sufficient stock for normal demand. We believe that when we accept the customer's money cheerfully, <clears throat> excuse me, we should, when required, refund it just as cheerfully. We believe that when anything is wrong, that we should make it right quickly and graciously. We believe that our prices should be entirely competitive, and we strive to make them so at all times. Yes, these are the beliefs of Willoughby's, the beliefs that have made this the world's largest camera store at West 32nd Street in New York City.